Good morning. Yay. Great to see you all. Um, welcome to Sunday morning worship. <laughs> it's, um, it's great to be with all of you. Uh, so we, you know, sign on, some of us sign on as, as early as 9.15, you know, if we're involved in the service for the day. And, and then there's lovely visiting and chatter and tech, you know, ironing out tech issues between 9.15 and now. And I just want to say, um, you know, that, that so much goes into bringing this to us. And I am so grateful to um, Marty Cermak and the presenting team, Ali and Carson and, um, and today Dave Herzl for his, his uh, first, uh, first ever run at this. And I'm so grateful to them for giving their time and their energy. And I'm so grateful that they're willing to step out and just take the risk of, you know, doing this, this important task. Um, and I'm, I'm grateful to the congregation for our grace in um, understanding that this is complicated stuff and that it's not always perfect. And uh, it, it is such a tremendous help to me. For many months, I was trying to do it all and I just can't tell you how stressful it was and how hard it was to go through worship. And um, this team really, lets me not worry about it. Even when there are technical problems, I, I am at peace and I am so grateful. And, and I hope you are at peace too. And I hope that our presenters when they're wrestling with technical issues are at peace because we can have everything set up just perfectly and then something surprising happens. And I am telling you, there are, there's a whole sermon series in how we can have everything set up perfectly and then something happens. A lot of times that's how God gets our attention. I don't know that God's trying to get our attention right now. Um, God's just with us. But how great that we can work things out together in the presence of each other with grace and love in our hearts. So welcome. Welcome to worship where things are beautiful and clunky and um, the, the, the pastor nominating committee might remember that when I first wrote to SPC, when you were looking for a pastor, I said, I, I borrowed Anne Lamott's description of a church. He said, I want a place that's about real lives, that's, you know, beautiful and messy and complicated and grace-filled and, and that's real life. So welcome, welcome to worship. I'm excited today because our wonderful, beloved Sally Adams is going to be sharing the uh, her word with us today, her message on the word, and um, and she's a, had a remarkable life and has a remarkable mind, so that'll be great too. So with that said, I do want to ask if there's anyone uh, joining us today for the first time, or maybe you've been joining a little bit but never had a chance to introduce yourselves, we would love to just say hi and get to know your name a bit. So if you would unmute yourself if you want and just say hi this is who i am we just want to take a moment to welcome you if anyone wants to do that well i'll start i'm louise i'm sally's daughter and i live in maine so um i'm here just to hear what mom has to say about charles dickens <laughs> wonderful louise it's so great to have you thank you Thanks, for joining Paul. us we love your mom. <laughs> Thanks. We do too. <laughs> and if anyone else wants to say hi, we are. I'll say hi too. Um, I'm I'm Sally's grandchild, and I also live in Maine. And I'm really excited to see everybody and to worship with a different community. Um, so thanks for having me. I'm so glad you're here. Welcome, welcome. I'm glad we've now gone into a new generation. Of, uh, of Sally's uh, descendants. That's wonderful. I'm so glad you could join us. And anyone else? Okay, well, it is great to see you all. I'm just looking around. It's really wonderful. And let us uh, welcome each other with a sign of peace, the, the peace that passes all understanding 
May the peace of God be with you. Peace. And also with you. And I would like to invite Marty Hartrick, who just celebrated her 33rd wedding anniversary to Don Cope. Uh, two of our beloveds, if you would unmute yourself and call us to worship. Well, I'm the one calling you to worship. It's Joni. Joni, <laughs> I... Yes. Our beloved Joni and Alan, whenever your anniversary is, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Will you please call us the word? Okay. A moment. <laughs> Come join us in worship. I've, I've chosen one of Sally Adams' favorite words of wisdom uh, to call us to worship. Love is a choice, not simply or necessarily a rational choice, but rather a willingness to be present to others without pretense or guide. Love is a conversion to humanity, a willingness to participate with others in the healing of a broken world and broken lives. Love is the choice to experience life as a member of the human family, a partner in the dance of life. By Carter Hayward. Come join us in worship. Now let us sing Be Thou My Vision as we're led by Janice Graham. Janice um, for leading us in song. And I'd like to invite now Marty Hartrick, celebrating 33 years and 10 minutes um, of, a new, of her anniversary to read our um, scripture for this morning and to unmute yourself. Thanks, Marty. Unmute yourself, Marty. Can you hear me now? Yes. Good morning, everyone. The scripture this morning is taken from Luke. Hear the word of God. But I say to you that, listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, 
what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good, and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High. For he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful to you. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given unto you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. This ends the reading of the scriptures. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Marty. And uh, I would like to now welcome Sally Adams to um, okay. So now you can deliver the message. So read the things, Marty. If you will mute yourself, and Sally, if you will unmute yourself. Forget people are looking at you or you're yelling at them. Okay. Marty and Don, you're still on. Oh, there you go. Great. That's wonderful, Sally. Welcome. Um, thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. It's been a long time. A man approaches one of the houses and knocks on the door. And when the owner of the house answers, the homeless man asks him for a meal. The owner replies that he would be happy to feed the man in exchange for some honest work. He tells the homeless man to go to the, into the garage, get a can of paint from the shelf and put a fresh coat of paint on his porch. An hour later, the wealthy man hears a knock at his door again. When he opens the door, he is greeted again by the homeless man who says, hey, I'm all finished up with that paint job, but you should know that it's a BMW in there, not a Porsche. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> okay. um, Charles Dickens wrote the tale of two cities in 1859. It begins, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom, it was the age of foolishness. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> it was the epic of belief. It was the epic of incredulity. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope and it was the winter of despair. We had everything before us. We had nothing before us. We were all going to heaven. We were all going direct the other way. In short, the period was so far like the depression and present day, it is hard to read. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. The depression lingered on, food was in short supply, there were no jobs, bread lines were blocks long, soup kitchens were feeding hundreds of people, money was in short supply, homes were lost, bank accounts and savings were wiped out, and lives were lost. Am I alluding to present day? Yes and no. It was a depression I was speaking of, 1929 to 1939. This was one of the eras that my family lived through. But it was during that time that I was taught empathy. And that's what it was all about. Have you ever been hungry? Have you ever not had enough to eat? 
your stomach rumbling without food or in pain from lack of nourishment? There were and are so many who are and were in the depths of despair. The depression tainted my father for fear of having no food or necessities. So we never bought one of anything. He would send me to market to buy groceries and on the list would be soup. Not just one can of soup, but a case of soup. He would buy coffee and flour and sugar by the case. Never would a, fam would a family member or a family larger member ever go hungry. It might not have been right, but to him it was necessary and it would carry over all the way through World War II. He was simply scared. But at the same time, he would give the shirt off his back to those who needed help. He was the kindest and most gentle man I have ever known. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. I remember my mother also as a strong, kind and gentle woman, feeding the homeless men and women and giving them jobs around the property. This was not quid pro quo. It was her way of sharing and saving the dignity of other human beings. I remember my mother as my mother Teresa performing kinds, acts of kindness in a time of distress. What would you do today? What would we hear today? Don't talk to strangers and be cautious of your surroundings. But the one that hits the hardest for me is not in my backyard. Please don't answer me by saying it, this is a different time. Human beings are human beings. A definition might be in order. So let's start with an era. An era is not a defined number of years. Rather, it is a period of time marked by certain characteristics, such as historical events. We all have lived long enough to have lived through a myriad of eras, some of them good, some of them not so good. Let me share a story. A friend of mine shared a memory that has haunted him for decades. It was an early Saturday morning in November, the day of the high school cross country championship for the state of Pennsylvania. He was just 17 years old and he was walking from his home to the high school where he would climb on a bus that would take him and his fellow runners to state college. There were, a f they were one of the few favorite teams to win the championship. And he was excited, he was nervous, and he was freezing. It was a bitterly cold morning, snowing hard, with an inch or so already on the ground. And as he reached the wooden footbridge over the canal that split the city in two, he saw a little boy, maybe five, maybe six years old. The boy was just standing there next to the bridge, shivering. He had no gloves on and his nose was running. My friend didn't know what to do. He had no money. And even if he did, he doesn't know what he would have done with it. So he pulled out his handkerchief and wiped the little boy's nose and gave the boy his handkerchief and then walked on. He said that he's never talked about that moment until now, but he thought about it often. He wonders whatever became of that little boy. He has said to himself many times, I should have done more, but what? He does not presume that God placed the little boy there for an encounter, 
but he does believe that in and through that little boy, God touched his heart to teach him that religion is not primarily a set of beliefs, that Christianity, if it makes any sense at all, is not about how confidently we affirm lines of a creed, but what we do about a little boy shivering in the cold at the foot of a bridge. His was the type of experience that ought to get under our skin, not in order to beat up on ourselves, but to ratchet up our level of guilt for not responding better, but to serve as a life lesson so that on future occasions, when we encounter human need, we will act differently. One only hopes. The pain and suffering we encounter can make us callous and indifferent. We can train ourselves to avert our gaze from people who are hurting and to focus only on the pleasant thoughts. Or we can be empathetic to the sufferings of others and reach out to them as best we can. This morning's passage reminds us that empathy is one of the essential characteristics of a Christian-like life. Its roots are formed in the familiar words of Jesus, known as the golden rule. Do to others as you would have them do to you. Before we go further, let's listen to another definition of empathy. Empathy is a noun. It is an action of understanding being aware of, being sensitive to, and vicariously experiencing the feelings, thoughts, and experiences of another past or present. Empathy then is when you feel what someone else feels. It is seeing the world from the perspective of another. It is grasping as fully as possible what someone else experiences. In the New Testament letter to the Hebrews, the author writes, remember those who are in prison as though you were in prison with them. Those who are being tortured as though you yourself are being tortured. So I am appealing to our empathetic imagination. We are not just to feel sorry for those in need, we are to feel with those in need as if the burden has become our own. Just as an amputee has been known to feel the phantom pain in an arm or a leg that no longer exists, so too the followers of Jesus to feel the pain of others as if it existed in our own body. In many circumstances, it is natural to empathize with people who suffer. Certainly in the past months, we have witnessed tremendous destruction meted out by weather, disease, and frightening attacks by Americans on Americans. It would be abnormal for us to be indifferent to their sufferings and to be unable to picture ourselves experiencing similar pain. However, in some circumstances, it is difficult to empathize with the trials of another. If we have the knack for learning, it may be hard to identify with someone who has learning disabilities. If we have never been depressed, it may be impossible for us to imagine how dark life can appear for someone who feels utter hopelessness. Sometimes it's not easy to fully grasp the sufferings of others. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> then there are times when we purposely block out pain of others. Perhaps life is going well for us and we are afraid that the suffering of others will drag us down. Or maybe we believe that the one who is suffering brought it on herself and deserve what she is getting. Or perhaps 
we view the one who suffers as an adversary. We need to keep in mind what Jesus said immediately after saying, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. He said, if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good for those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. But love your enemies, do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High. For God is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your father mother is merciful. Or as some scholars translate this verse, be compassionate as God is compassionate. Jesus urges us to have empathy for those so that we will treat them as we would want them treated. He's not saying to strike a bargain. I'll scratch your back if you scratch mine. He's simply saying, take the risk of being compassionate to others. And that's it. We are not all in the same boat. We are in the same storm. Some have yachts, some have canoes, and some are drowning. Just be kind and help where you can. But remember, if you do open up these new possibilities, you will do wonders for your own soul. Amen. Amen. Sally, thank you for that beautiful, important message. So beautiful. Thank you. We're going to have the dialogue, but let's take a moment in prayer and, and then we'll come together to, to reflect and engage on Sally's words. Beloved God, we say thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for this day and for this time. Thank you for courage and for grace, for encouragement and forgiveness. And thank you so much for our beloved sister, Sally, your faithful servant who brings such life and relevance to your word, who makes it real and touching to us that she might reach our hearts and our minds. We pray that in our time together, your spirit sweeps over us, taking each word and making it the word each one of us needs to hear. And so we pray, be with us as we soften our hearts and open our minds. And as we worship you this morning and contemplate your word and Sally's wisdom that enlightens us for us in your many holy names amen thank you sally i want to invite people at this point for the dialogue if you would like to weigh in join the conversation so to speak just unmute yourself and just speak up we we can't really uh be hand waving too well so just unmute yourself i just want to Say something in thanks to Reverend Sally. Um, you, you give me courage. You give me courage. To, it's it's not easy to reach out to somebody who is very different or who's laying on the sidewalk or you know whom you presume to have some uh, problems that you can't solve. But but it is it is good to have that courage to talk to them or to do something more than drop a dollar in their lap. Um, I hear people all the time say, oh, don't, don't give money to those people. Uh, don't give them anything. They're just begging. And right. what do they need the money for? Are their tuition at Harvard? They need uh. Because they're hungry. <laughs> so what a little, what a small thing to help when we have so much. And we may not have lots of money, but we have 
a warm place to sleep and food when we need it. So thank you so much. This is a beautiful, beautiful thing to hear today. Thank you. Thank you. I often think about what uh, classes I wish were taught in school as I'm thinking about my uh, fairy godson and how amazing he is. And one of the things that strikes me is that some people don't know how to uh, walk in someone else's shoes, which was the way I was taught about it when I was a child. And so classes, what about classes for kids in, you know, exercises in how to walk in someone else's shoes so that they get an idea of it? That, that's just a wish I have. And uh, I think you're talking about having empathy. Uh, yeah, thank you. I, it was amazing sermon. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Thank you. If I may say, this is Marty. <clears throat> There's so much unrest and so many things happening in this world, this our country. <clears throat> and during the last month, which was Black History Month, and I, I've been watching a lot of um, movies Mm -hmm. uh, Netflix uh, regarding the Black History Month. And one of them, um, I, I, I recommend everyone, if you haven't been, to go watch some of them. It's not going to have you walk in their shoes, but I was aghast at so many things that I lived through when I was 10, 12, 15. I knew that it happened, but in my bubble in Minnesota, I didn't really know what happened. And to see a replay and to see what really happened, um, it's a perspective of not in their shoes, but a, a real perspective of it. And um, so, yeah, that, that's all I can say is it's been just so actually shattering. I really encourage a lot of you to go and, I'm Not Your Negro is one of them, 13th is another one of them. Mm -hmm. um, I just encourage you to, to watch them even a couple of times and hear, because we don't know. And so that's that empathy and the compassion that we really need moving forward. So yes. thank you, Sally. You're welcome. May I add one thing? That is, if you haven't watched on uh, television, the Black Churches program, it is incredible. And you all should take a good look at that. And the other thing I wanted to add, if you've never read Tale of Two Cities, Pick it up and read it. It's well worthwhile. I would like to say we're all familiar with saying, pay it back. Yes. But I believe we should be more inclined to pay it forward. Yes. Thank you, Sally. That was just wonderful. Absolutely. Excellent. It was very good, what we needed to hear. Thank you. And thank you, Dan. So good to see you. Thanks for your help. Um, oh, did someone else for day? I was just gonna say thank you, Sally, for showing us another way to open our hearts even more than we might be inclined to. And that was such a rich, helpful sermon or talk to us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to say that I was so touched by the story of the man that uh, saw the little boy uh, standing by the bridge. And, um, you know, I think sometimes, especially during these times, um, we can all be so overwhelmed by how much need there is in this world right now. But I know so many people that, um, you know, they may have a lot of money, they may have everything that we think we all should have, but they need attention too sometimes. And again, I, I, I guess I go back to whatever crosses your path, I think there's a reason why they're, we're there or they're there at that time. And 
and it sounds like a little thing, but you know, sometimes even if we just help one person in our whole lifetime, it's a huge thing. It can be huge. And I know so many need so much right now, but, and you know, we're not really crossing each other's paths right now either. So I don't know. It's, um, it's an interest, it's an interesting thing. Um, but how each one of us can help even just one person uh, or ourselves is, I think, a really good thing to do. So, you know. Thank you. Sally? Yes, I appreciate the handkerchief story. As everybody knows, <laughs> I collect vintage handkerchiefs, but there are so many stories of finding soldiers in a and gathering the bodies and when they would go to dress them for funerals over their hearts they would have handkerchiefs from handkerchiefs. a loved one from a mother from a from a, a daughter when my aunt died i gave my uncle and all of their children a handkerchief monogrammed with my aunt's initials and she was a mahoney who married a mccarthy it was a very irish group Oh my and, goodness. <laughs> and my when later when he died, my cousins told me, because I said I didn't know what to do. I gave him these, you know, Irish linen handkerchiefs with tatting on the borders. And my cousin Mary said he carried that with him every day until he died. He kept that handkerchief with her initials in his pocket. So that little boy may have carried that handkerchief and taken it out like a teddy bear to just say, oh, somebody cares. Somebody Absolutely. loves me. So thank you so much. You're so welcome. Um, I'd just like to say, Sally, thank you for the story. I was that little boy that you spoke of ah. from the depression in World War II. The stock market crashed in November 29, and I was born in April 1930. And um, I just want to, and it was the church that saved us, Church of the Messiah in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, we didn't have enough to eat. We didn't have a place to live. And, and uh, the church came to us and found us a place to live and helped us get started on our way. And so I just want to thank those people and um, anyone who gives in that way. Thank you. Thank you. Sally, I really, I don't, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Oh, Sally, I just <clears throat> want to thank you for this one word to think about this week, and that is empathy. It's just a word that it's going to stay with me, and it has for uh, many years, just because of a story that I won't relate to. But an, a current story, very much like the young boy who gave the, the little boy, indeed, a handkerchief, Woody and I were at the church doing some gardening and a mother and two little children came up to the church to get some water. And the, the child, the beautiful children and the mother took her toys out and they played for a while while we were gardening and they got up quickly and decided to leave. And um, when they got up to leave, the little girl was, did not have shoes. Mm. It was and a cold day. And it was a cold day. And um, so I said to her, I said to the little girl, uh, tell me your name. And, uh, and then Woody went to find Paul to see if there are any children's clothing. And I said, tell me your name. And she said, well, my name is Rachel. And then she waved at me and she said, have a good day. Yeah. And I, I kept thinking, I mean, Woody and I were thinking, how can we catch that mother and child? What can we do? You know, we don't have children or little shoes, but I, I just, I, it just bothers me now. I don't know what happened to little Ray, little shoeless Rachel. And, um, you know, they kind of disappear. And then what do you do? So that brought that story back to me. And I, I think we just, we just need to think much more about the homeless problem that we have in our country and in all of our areas. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Sally. Oh, you're more than welcome. Oh, 
any other? Hi, uh, hi yeah. Sally. Can you, I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah, I guess you can. Sally, when I was uh, six years old, my mother died and the church, she died singing in the choir. I think she collapsed and the ambulance came. Oh. And, uh, you know, the church was a place of refuge in a way. And it has been, obviously, that my uh, mother made my father promise that he would always take me to church. And then he, he was sort of a broken man after that. He lived another eight years or so. And and it wasn't really present, but <clears throat> but I think you know the church has always been and people of good intention and kindness, like like uh, like uh, Beverly was one of those people. You know that, that I feel that we're drawn to the church because for, by something, and I think people of good intent. Um, uh, anyway, I, I just want to say that that's what sustained and made me who I am in life. So thank you, Sally, for putting that together. And thank you for being our sage and elder. Oh, yes, I am. <laughs> 94 this May. Oh, my goodness. What? Yeah, I'll be 94. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's what I say. Oh, holy crow. <laughs> A beautiful 94. Oh, aren't you kind? Thank you. And anybody else want to? Uh... Oh, Simone, just yeah, unmute yourself. Great, I, I saw you. Yeah, Sally, thank you so much for that. It was just absolutely lovely how you wove uh, empathy and, and the era of then, the era of now, and everything that we're going through. Um, it, it so reminds me of. Uh, feeling a sense of hopelessness, Beverly, with little Rachel, uh, when somebody comes across you. But on the other hand, proactively, we've got a whole group of homeless people uh, in at Dunphy Park in Sausalito because they, they can't live on their boats. And I just couldn't help but think in my mind, as I have been thinking, what can we do? What can we do? What can we do? Me as an individual, uh, I can't do a lot. But with all the faces on the screen here, you know, maybe Sausalito Presbyterian in some way could adopt those folks and come up with some kind of plan to do something. I don't know what. And then maybe it expands out to the other churches in Sausalito. Um, you know, I, I think they all need a place to live, place to stay, probably close to the water where they're comfortable. But anyway, it was just a thought that came to mind because I've been thinking about what can I do? What can I do? Mm -hmm. And um, your message just really strikes home. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sally, I, your sermon was so moving and poetic and powerful. And also just adding to Simone, all of us who are in Sausalito, and driving by the tent encampment every day and aware of the huge divide that has fallen on this town. Um, there is so much, so much work to do. There's so many people who, and Paul has played such an amazing role in bringing together like the privileged and the people who are in desperate need and bridging those gaps. Mm -hmm. But there's been so much, um, it's so weighted against the, the system has been so weighted against those folks, the 20 or 30 people in the camps and the council who is working hard to get them moved out. And you see all of these amazing attempts at compassion and empathy and all of these really severe attempts that are the opposite, all kind of happening at the same time over the past couple months. And it's, it's just been, your sermon just was so inspiring. I wish everybody in Sausalito could hear your sermon right now. Oh, so thank, thank you. you thank yeah. you. Thank you. Well, on that note, let me say a couple things. Um, uh, one is that um, everybody in Sausalito and 
all over the world can hear this sermon thanks to Robin Sinclair who takes our, our, our Sunday worship services and it's, she doesn't just put the recording online, she makes it really uh, visually beautiful and technically smooth. And, um, and so share, share this, you know, there is a link on every spin to our um, homepage, our, our, our channel on YouTube, which Robin also maintains. And the, the sermons are there, the whole services. And so, um, and, and maybe I think if Robin, you help me remember, we'll, we'll actually put on our Facebook page and in spin a time-coded link so that we can go also straight to Sally's sermon and you know put it on next door and put it on your Facebook page and tweet it if you tweet um, and and share it with your friends. Um, it was Sally a um, it was absolutely the perfect time and absolutely the perfect time uh, for this message. And I love your um, your grace and your love and your intellect uh, and for how you you wove this together, this really important story. I also will encourage anybody who is interested in providing any kind of help or somehow just being connected to the tent uh, camp on Bridgeway to send me your, to send me your, a, a quick email saying, I, I'd like to be on your email list. Some of you I have put on that list without your permission. And if I haven't heard back from you, I'm, you're, going to go off the list because I, I want to be careful not to um, I want to provide opportunity but also you know let people choose where they want to be involved but I want to share the story that uh, this past weekend the tent community had an art show at the at the campsite and I sent an email to um, a small group of, of folks uh, from the community and from clergy friends and, and from SPC, who I thought had a, might have a particular connection to it. So I, I didn't send it out to the whole, uh, as you'd say in Yiddish, the whole family, the whole Mishpacha, but I did send it out to some folks. But um, I also happened to mention that we were trying to figure out something about helping people do laundry, because that's a very big issue for people living on the streets or in tents, is how do you get laundry done? You don't have the money for the laundry. How do you get to the laundry map? And so we are, um, uh, so I sent out an email saying, you know, here, there's going to be this art show plus trying to figure out something about laundry. And I shared the story of a 64 year old, 64 year old woman who's living at the tent site right now, has no home, has been on a list for housing for a year. She's uh, 64. She has very bad arthritis. Uh, she just, I could read her texts or play her messages um, from my phone and every heart here would crack as it's been cold and wet. And, uh, and, and the reality is there really is not housing. There is not shelter available. And so when we read commentary that says, well, these people should accept housing. Well, I, I know people at the camp who are begging for housing. They're begging toward the turnkey program, which would put them in a hotel for a few days there are not those resources available. And so um, there's very real suffering, but I put in the thing that I was hoping to get her a bigger tent. So I just wanna say that from that email, I think we've had like uh, two or three tent donations, a, a lot of blankets. Um, people brought blankets down on Saturday morning or they brought them here to the church or we picked them up from their house. Um, People have um, are doing things, you know, and those those kind of things make a lot of difference. And um, so, if you want to participate, that and somebody from the community uh, just emailed me and said, um, "Our family wants to get that bigger tent for that woman." So, you know, that's like they're gonna buy like a three hundred dollar tent, you know, that this woman can live in. So that she's not in a, 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 you know, a leaky small tent that she can't move around in. So, so there are ways, like very real ways, to help. And plus, just go by, um, and you know, it's a very friendly crew. You can just walk up. You know, it's it's the, uh, 
it's right behind the toxic waste dump um, next to Dunphy Park. And, you know, people go and visit all the time or walk by. You can just walk up and say, hey, I've been reading about uh, about the, uh, you know, about the tents here. And I wanted to come down and meet some people. Um, so let's see. So, so that's, that's something we can do. And thank you, Simone and everybody who sort of brought that up and, and Sally who said, you know, like that, that handkerchief story, you know, this is something you can do right now. And, and I also wanted to share that um, uh, on that handkerchief story that um, people give me crosses, you know, and, and, and I have a large collection of crosses and I have a large collection of small crosses you know, that you would wear around your neck. Um, too many that I to wear in a lifetime. So I, I, I keep them in, a, in an old offering plate that we don't use here at SPC. And, uh, but a while ago, I got into the habit of bringing it down to our Wednesday lunch. I would ask people if they wanted a cross and um, they loved it. And some of my clergy friends who know about this have given me their small crosses, you know, um, and, uh, and so people carry, you know, they'll, they'll take a cross and, and they carry it with them um, from SPC. Uh, just one other way we're sort of just, you know, touching folks. Um, and Sally, just my final thing is, is NIMBY. I was so glad you said, don't tell me things were, are different now because compassion and human relationships are not any different now than they were 2,000 years ago or 20,000 years ago. And um, we still need to um, be our brother's keeper. Amen. Now, I, we're going to pray. And I want to just, uh, Marty Hartrick has the prayers of the community. So I just want to give her a heads up. Let us pray now um, the prayers of the people and, and, and of, and of uh, and the Lord's Prayer. So if you'll please join me in prayer. Beloved God, thank you so much for hearts that care, for minds that stretch and, and push themselves and each other, um, for everything, uh, every joy and tribulation that has shaped Sally and her mind and her heart to bring us such a powerful message this morning. Thank you for this community, for... Um, for the church that brought Sterling um, through when his mom died, that um, brought Mike through um, hard, uh, through the depression and hard times and has touched all of our lives. Thank you for, um, you know, this particular gathering that, that we get to not only hear your word, but engage it and wrestle with it and celebrate it and challenge it and, and be called to it. And we lift up now, oh God, some of the, just some of the prayers of thanks and concern and some of the names that are in our hearts and on our minds this morning. Good morning, once again. We have many prayers this morning for both healing and gratitude. Uh, at the top of the list is thanks to Reverend Sally for her beautiful, beautiful words this morning. Uh, also prayers for healing after the loss of both of my parents and prayers of thanks for all the support regarding this loss. Prayers for continued employment. Prayers for Rick and continued healing prayers for a successful memorial service for my mom, healing for our country, and thanks for the empathy shown by our president in regard to COVID. Prayers for Faina and her upcoming surgery, Donnie Sue Atkins, who passed on Friday, Harold Obenhofer, Connie and Frank, Christian, in who is now in memory care, and COVID lockdown. Some of the names I'd like to mention are Tim, Brian, Fran, Jeff, Sophia, Jeff B, Jennifer, Karen, Catherine B, 
and prayers for anyone who uh, who may need a special touch this morning. Thank you. Beloved God, we know that many of our prayers we don't speak aloud and sometimes share with no one but you. So these prayers from our hearts we lift up now as we take time together to pray in silence. Beloved God, hear our prayers and hear us as we pray the words that Jesus taught his disciples to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Our debtors. And, and lead us lead not us into, into temptation, temptation but, but deliver us, us from evil. evil. For thine For is thine the kingdom, kingdom and the power, the power and, and the glory, and glory forever. forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now our offering. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above you, heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son. Beloved God, we give thanks for all the, all the good gifts you have put into our hands, and we pray for the wisdom to move them swiftly to the hands in need. In your holy name we pray, amen. Thank you for your ongoing support, for your pledges, for your um, plate offerings. Um, it, it helps us to continue our ministry both here just in our community and in the community at large. I want to draw your attention. Not everybody knows that there's this wonderful little chat box at the bottom of your screen, and it's called chat. And um, today, especially, has been really rich. I, I wasn't preaching. Thank you again for that, Sally. Um, so I had a chance to actually watch the chat box. It's very interesting. And I, I invite you to open it up, and I'll teach you a little thing. When you open it up, uh, there's a place you can type your message. But to the right, uh, there's three little dots. And if you click them, there's an option that says save chat. And if you do that, when you sign off of Zoom, a window will open up and it will have a little file name and you can click on that and it will have the chat from today's conversation. There's a lot of good information here. So I really want to encourage you to look at it. To those of you who have sent me a particular message, yes, 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 yes to the chains, yes to the tents um, and other things. I'm, I'm not even caught up. Um, but there are also interesting comments. I want to thank uh, my friend and, and colleague, the Reverend Devira Haddon, who worships with us. Um, you know, we pretty regularly, uh, she has a, a wonderful comment here just about how Jesus asks us to change the status quo from making ordinary exchanges to open-ended opportunity a transformation that allows God to work in the world more freely. And so look at your chat. They're really great, great wisdom there. Um, we're trying to put some more things in spin. So if you haven't been, you know, if, if you've kind of given up checking out spin, uh, give it another visit. 
And um, and I think that's all we have to say right now. Oh, but I also will draw attention that in the chat, there is information from Civil Boutillier, who is working on getting all Sausalito seniors, people 65 and older, vaccinated. And if you do live in Sausalito and you're 65 and older, and you haven't hit some other list, there will be vaccination opportunity this week. Um, uh, if you're under 65, but are just um, uh, hoping to get a, a vaccination, um, they definitely check out uh, what's going on locally. There's there's vaccination, two, two days of vaccinations in Marin City. There's testing, Sausalito's doing testing every week. Um, so there, there is a lot of availability, so check that out. Paul, I just wanted to mention that uh, SPIN is always on the homepage. Latest and, spin is always on the homepage. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, Robin keeps us so um, fresh online. We well, really appreciate the, that. Thanks for updating SPIN and keeping it fresh. Bless you. You're welcome. <laughs> I think that's it. Is there is there something I'm forgetting? No. Well no. then. Can I just uh, can I just say for people who aren't can't uh, don't see the chat that if they uh, do want a vaccination this week in South Salido and they're 65 or over, or, or and and if they have a caregiver, that person can also come to email agefriendlysalsalito at gmail.com or to um, call the phone number that's in the chat or if anybody wants a phone number stay on afterwards and I'll give it to you. Fantastic and thank, thank you for all the work you do Sybil. Thank you uh, Paul. Just one more note too about vaccines in Sausalito. Um, on, there's been a mobile clinic in Marin City on Tuesday and Wednesdays and they're not fully booked and you can actually just go over there between 10.30 and 2.30 and get the vaccine. And that's a different, yeah. That's, that's a, a different. different opportunity. This one, City Hall, uh, just that one day. Yeah, okay. one morning. So, and anything you have questions about that you've heard mentioned here, please feel free to email me or the office and, and we'll, we'll help you follow up on it. What a wonderful morning. What a wonderful morning of being together and what a wonderful morning of um, meeting, meeting Sally's family for generations and um, just getting to share our love and our ideas and our thoughts with each other. Um, I am so excited about, you know, a time when we can gather again and, um, by, and I'm so grateful to everything, everybody from the AT&T computer maintenance people who am I don't even know, to everyone here, then and to everybody who just shows up that lets us continue this community, uh, even in the most um, interesting and challenging of times. So let us go out into the world, virtually or physically. Let us look and be aware and awake for those opportunities to pull a handkerchief from our pocket and to wipe a friend's nose or a stranger's nose. Let us go out into the world with gratitude for all the small gifts that we have that make our own lives comfortable and for um, the endless possibilities of touching another life and forever bringing that moment of kindness to their life story. Remembering always that life is short and we haven't much time to gladden the hearts of those who journey the way with us. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind, and remember always that the love of God, the grace of our brother Christ, and the sustaining breath of the Holy Spirit is with us now and forevermore. And wherever you go, May you go in peace and let the people say, Amen. 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 And now we're going to go you. into Sally, breakout thank rooms. You. Thank you, Sally. Wonderful, Sally. Thank you so much. I'm going out right away to get a tale of.
two cities. I've read it several times, but not in many, many years. Thank you.